Well, thank you very much for the invitation and for giving me this opportunity. I'm just wanting, I want to start with looking at the economic development of the recent years. What, of course, first comes to mind is the crisis and its far-reaching impact on the living conditions and perspectives of many people. However, it's obvious that this crisis is more fundamental, reaching much beyond this and presenting itself as human crisis, crisis of humanity, crisis of agency, the feeling of uncertainty in the words of Sigmund Bauman and Carlo Baldoni. And this problematic is also hugely relevant for the question of security that we are asking here. I propose three dimensions to security, namely the external threats and harassment, often translating into direct violence. The lack of security in terms of the lack of resources that allow people to cope with life. And finally, the underlying fractures causing the structural insecurity and this crisis of agency. This understanding is taken as background. And looking at the crisis, we best may refer to the crisis of the anthropological system as outlined by Bokara, a crisis that concerns the entire life and the way of people's production and reproduction of daily life, the kinship relations, the work, the political system, and the wide area of socio-cultural existence. Now, we see the old security system, the old security of Keynesian welfare national state are failing, and it seems to be in, impossible to retrieve them. The trans transitory Schumpeterian workfare post-national regime, as Yepsop calls it, is, well, at most, only a historical viable. What do welfare economics say? The general acknowledgement of the limitations of GDP, a standard measurement of welfare, is not new, and it can be seen, for instance, by the fact that both the idea of Pareto efficiency and the welfare economics as reasoning for comp compensating taxation occurred in the beginning of the last century. Today, actually, since the early 1960s, we find an increasing debate again, elaborating complex system of social indicators, trying to f find ways of evaluating more clearly links between economic growth, wealth and well-being, and also discussing understandings of development that are not simply accepting the Rostovian proposal of a one-path model of modernization. We find since some time again a strengthened debate on these issues. And globally, they are especially marked by the emergence and widespread acknowledgement of the question of human development. The debate is increasingly characterized by the search for, in, <coughs> for a way that genuinely considers the social character as a relational issue, well-being going quant qualitatively beyond the well-being and status of individuals, and where the social fabric is not seen as an issue of an abstract society that still is designed as an ideal living space for the aggregate individuals. Looking at the far-reaching changes of the productive forces and the newly strengthened interest in welfare economics, we can see both as part of a slow but far-reaching structural change of the mode of production. In the beginning of the last century, we saw the emergence of the system that became known as Fordism. In the new century, we see the emergence of what still is in the making, the computer age, knowledge age, knowledge society, era of digitalization and the like. This allows us to have a clear understanding of the challenges we face, and it allows us to develop a sound grasp of the new challenges for social security. Indeed, the breaking up of the wage earner, stable household, stable life career system requires a new institutional scaffold for, and for this new foundation stones for socio-economic security. The requirement goes far beyond the aspect of securing at stake as are both the standards themselves and the way of reaching them. And this is fundamentally a question of the valuation of socialization. Now we have to link this to the question of fundamentally changed conditions of production, not simply as technical matter or gener uh, generation of money and material value, but in terms of the character of value itself. What is value? We find the different hypes here, sharing economy, prosumerism, convivialism, zero marginality of production, 
collaborative consumption, collaborative economy, on-demand economy, localized exchange markets, currencies, bartering, and, and so on and so on. It is a confusing picture and at first sight. And it is correct and important to say that these are, in several cases, quite dangerous, misleading. It is an economic exchange and consumers are after utilitarian rather than social values, as Eckhart and Badi say. And of course this translates into a major threat of socio-economic security. Problems are prevalent in the countries of the Global North and the Global South alike. And these social problems are too often the immediate background of emergent fears, oppression, leading to violence, leading to resistance, a spiral for which solutions must be sought of today. However, if we think of the three dimensions of security as they had been outlined in the introduction, external threat and harassment often translating into direct violence, the lack of security in terms of the lack of resources to allow people to cope with life, with daily life, the underlying fractures causing the structural, structural insecurity, insecurity as crisis of agency. Now, then we have to think about the urgent need to address the huge potentials that are opening up. The hypes around the new economic forms mentioned before can indeed as well interpret it as an expression of five giant tensions that need to be addressed as structural changes, structural security issues, of our times, namely the overproduction of goods and the turn of goods into bads, the societal abundance versus inequality of excess, abundance of knowledge but its misdirection towards skills, the individualization of problems and the, uh, their emergence as societal threat, and finally the complexity of government and the limited scope of governance. At the end, we have to acknowledge that the objective means for social policy, for economics, and for security alike have to solve these problems that are given, and it is the very existence of these means that cause these tensions. This is because we still use the old answers when attempting solving the new problems. But rise as supposedly Albert Einstein said, we cannot solve the problems using the same kind of thinking we used when we created them. And this means as well, perfection of means and confusion of goals seem, in my opinion, to characterize our age. This is as well what Einstein said. Thank you very much.